I have never been so excited to wake up in the morning and find a fire ant mound in my yard. In fact, I'm probably the first person in the history of the universe to ever even say that. All right. But I am so excited about this. Not because of the fire ants. I mean, they're going to have to die. But because of what they have revealed about the work I've been doing in my clay soil yard. So wait till you see this, and I'm going to show you. I want to move the camera. It's going to be a little shaky, but but I want you to see what we're looking at here in real time. So this is the fire ant mound that I found this morning. All right, and I want you to notice the color, the black texture of that soil. Now remember, I have a red clay soil yard. In fact. I'm going to bring you over here next to my shop where you can see the raw dirt, okay? That's what it looks like. And here's a mound. This You can see this area has not been treated. I haven't been taking care of it. And you can see a regular mound. But now look again at just how deep and dark black that fire ant mound is. So let me set up a camera. Let's talk. Okay, so let me give you a little perspective. Here's a picture of an anthill in this yard two years ago. You notice it's red clay, but when you compare that to this current mound, it's crazy. All right, now, granted, that's two different parts of the yard, and that area I have not been treating. I divide my yard out and do different tests throughout this two acres, all right? So that area has not been treated, and at that time, it certainly had not been treated. This area has been for the past two years. But guys, I think that's the point. That's the point we need to talk about. This is the difference in the texture and quality and color of the soil after two years. Now, it hasn't been easy. It's not overnight, all right? Um, it, it's not a miraculous, just silver bullet that just happens one morning when you wake up, but just look at the results that have come from this. All right. I really want to give you hope. I get it. I know how frustrating clay soil is. I mean, you should have seen this yard two years ago. It was a nightmare. Okay. But just through some diligent, steady, consistent, best practices, if you will do these steps, and we'll talk about them here in just a few, um, and, and just be patient. That, that's probably the biggest part. Do the work and be patient and wait for the results. You can see dramatic changes to, to the quality of the soil underneath as well as the quality and thickness of your lawn. In fact, I want to show you a side-by-side -side of the thickness of the lawn here real quick. So here's a side-by-side of areas this strip has been treated if i back up you can actually see it i bet but to the left it has been treated this side on the right is not i want you just to look that's just a little five pound um weight i want you to notice that it just does not sink into the grass really at all all right i mean it's in fact it's like a rock under there now drop it over here i want you to compare and there's the ant mound for perspective. All right. And I apologize for the shaky cam, guys. This will be over quick. All right, but look at that. Once again, there. And I'm doing this real time just so you know I'm not playing games with you. All right. And here. All right. So just a few feet difference. And I really want to back up and see if I can give you, uh, I think you can see it right here. If you look at where that weight is, you can see the kind of the barren area down there to the on the right side compared to this side here that's been treated with a five-step process we're going to talk about in just a few. All right, let me get this back on a tripod so I don't make you guys nauseated. Okay, I'm nauseated after watching that video. Um, and I apologize for that, but I really wanted to impress upon you the physical difference. Uh, that you can see between one side and the other uh, after doing these treatments. Let me run real quick through the five steps uh, process that I'm referring to here. I've covered this in detail in another video, so I'm just going to skim through them real quick. 
but basically the five steps are the first thing we do is we use a liquid soil conditioner. Uh, this stuff is usually some sort of, uh, it's got the same active ingredient as shampoo in a lot of these. Whichever product you use, it doesn't matter. You're going to uh, spray that stuff out on your lawn, wait about an hour. You can wait two hours if you want to. You want to give it time to saturate because you're using it as a wetting agent, okay? It's going to saturate down into the top few inches of soil to make step two a little easier. Step two is we're going to come back with a core aeration process. You can rent a core aerator. If you have a, a riding mower, you can get a pull behind aerator. But however you approach it, you want to use core aeration, not spike aeration. All right. There is a place for spike aeration where you just use the metal spikes. This is not it. For clay soil, for our purposes, we want to use core aeration with spoons that dig down and physically pull cores of clay out of the ground. Then we're going to come back with deep core integration. This is the missing link, and this is what I want you to consider. It's a... Uh, um, you're going to use a drill bit. It's a, an auger bit for planting um, plant bulbs is what it is. And I'm going to have a link to our resources page uh, that gives a description of all these products and where you can get them. That'll be in the description on the YouTube video. But here's what you need to know. You're going to come back through and you're going to drill down a good, try to go at least 12 inches. If you can go 12 inches down, you're just going to do this all over your yard or all over whatever ever area you're spotting, you're targeting at this time. Step four has a lot of benefit for an existing lawn because we're going to go over and mow now. And if you have a mulching blade, by all means mulch it. If you have a side discharge, then get a rake and start spreading that grass out because what we want to do is get those grass blades into all of these holes that we have dug uh, or, or cored up throughout your yard so that we're adding organic matter into the soil. And then we get to step five. We're going to come back in the last step and we're going to spread a really good quality topsoil or if you've got access to compost, compost is fantabulous for this. Whatever you use, you want to use something of a good quality dirt that you're replacing that clay with. All right. And once you've done that, then in a few months, you're going to do it again. You know, people say aerate once every two years. I think those people don't have clay soil like this. All right. I would say do this in the, in the spring, do this again in the fall, and you may even hit it in the winter time. All right. Because every time you do it, you're pulling out those, uh, those cores of soil or clay, and you're putting good quality topsoil down uh, in its place. And that makes a difference over time, just as you've seen. The thing to remember is it doesn't change overnight. You know, I get, my wife says I get way too excited about this stuff. But I think the reason is, is, you know, you, you do the grind for two or three years and then to really start seeing the fruits of your labor, it's pretty rewarding. I, it, it is a little exciting. So, you know, that's why I get all excited and want to come out in the morning and show you an anthill. <laughs> Not because I'm glad the ants are here, but what they represent and, and what that soil looks like now. Uh, so, you know, have, have hope. If you work that clay soil, all right, and you're patient and you're diligent and you keep at it, you can really turn it around. You can really and truly make a difference. And I want to see you do that. And I want to hear your stories. So get after it.